happy Monday, everyone. Today, our lesson for our lesson, you might need a pencil and paper, but I wanted to start off today with you gathering the tools that you think you're going to need. I know we see lesson 1.7, traditional edition, but we are really going to break down in this lesson the two different types of edition. So we will be able to understand the strategies behind it. Remember, we're trying to get our tools so we understand the why behind our math. We're trying to understand the why. So we're going to look at two different types of addition today. Partial sums addition and U.S. traditional addition. As my friend goes through these two methods, I want you to consider which strategy works for you and why. Which strategy works? works for you and why. So that is our focus today in lesson 1.7. We are going to look at traditional addition. To make this make sense, let's make sure that we understand our standards and goals for our mathematical process and practice. So by the end of the lesson, we will be able to compare the strategies that we're going to use. We're going to compare partial sums addition and we're going to compare that to U.S. traditional edition. I know these terms sound a little different right now, but by the end of the lesson, you will understand and be able to compare. You will also be able to explain your thinking. Just like we did last week, we were able to explain why we use a strategy of close to estimates, why we use front end estimates. And also today, we are going to use structures to solve problems and answer questions. So we will see word problems and then just our standard math that we're used to. Today. And 20. So you're asking yourself, how can I solve these two problems? The first one, the soccer team held a car wash over the weekend to raise money. The team players washed 46 cars on Saturday and 27 cars on Sunday. How many cars did the team wash in all? And the second problem, 236 plus 195 equals, I'm going to give you time to think about that, show your work, and be prepared to explain how you determined how many cars the team washed, and then the answer to the second problem, 236 plus 195. For these two problems, I am going to review them with you and we're going to use a couple of different methods to actually solve the problem. The first thing we're going to do is use partial sums addition. Partial sums addition. That's our vocabulary term for you to take notes on. The soccer team held a car wash over the weekend to raise money. Okay, that's important, but we really don't need to know they held a car wash over the weekend. Let's figure out the important parts here. What's the information that we need? Because we're trying to determine how many cars did the team wash in all. That first sentence does not help us answer the question. The players washed 46 cars. So I'm underlining 46. I also underlined 27. That's going to be something I need to know. That will help me determine how many cars did the team wash in all. Now that I know how many cars they washed, 46 on Saturday and 27 on Sunday, what do I need to find out? What do I need to do with this information? So I need to know how many cars did they wash in all. First, I'm going to estimate, just like we did last week. 46 is about, think about it. Yes, 50. 46 is about 50. Let's keep thinking. 27 is about, we're still estimating here, 30. So now we have 50 plus 30, and we know that's 80. Now that I have an estimate, remember, we're looking at in all. So they washed 46 cars on Saturday and 27 cars on Sunday. We are going to use partial sums addition. I know that 46 is the same as 40 tens plus six ones. 
and 27 is the same as 20 tens plus seven ones. This is when our place value practice is coming into work. We just wrote the numbers in expanded form. Now let's solve. First, I'm going to add my tens. 40 plus 20 equals 60. You see in blue there, 40 plus 20 equals 60. Now I'm adding my ones. 6 plus 7 equals 13. Now that I've added my tens and my ones, I'm going to add my partial sums. 0 plus 3 equals 3. 6 plus 1 equals 7. My answer is 73. Now I'm going to check that with my estimate. Is 73 close to 80? Yes, they are very close. So my answer makes sense. We checked our first answer. It makes sense. We know there are 73 cards in all. Now, now let's check number 2. 236 plus 195. This time we can easily see it's not a word problem. It's just 236 plus 195. Before we do anything, let's estimate. Let's see what our answer will be about, and that will let us know if we're in the right direction when we actually solve our problem. So what is close to 236? Using my close to estimate, 236 is pretty close to 250, and I know that's an easy number for me to work with. And I know 195 is really close to 200. That's easy to add, so my total is 400. For this problem, we are going to use column addition. To solve my problem, I am going to write my columns, my place value chart, exactly what we practiced last week. I have my ones, tens, and hundreds. I have my ones, tens, and a column for my hundreds. If I had more place values, so if my number was 1,236, I would add another column. But for this example, it stops at the hundreds, so my columns that I'm writing on my paper will also stop at the hundreds. Now that I have my columns, I'm going to copy my numbers down and put it in the right place in the columns. From 236, I have two hundreds, three tens, and six ones. And now for 195, I have 100, 9 tens, and 5 ones. Notice we haven't solved anything yet. We just took our numbers and put them in the right columns using our place value chart. Now it's time to solve it. This is a little different than what we're used to. I'm just going to add my columns. 6 plus 5 equals 11. 6 plus 5 equals 11, so that's what I'm writing in my column. So I added my 10, 3 plus 9 equals 12, 3 plus 9 equals 12, 2 plus 1 equals 3. I added my hundreds, so I just added each column. Am I finished? Nope, it doesn't make sense. I know that I can't have two digits in one spot. I'm going to take 10 ones and move them to my tens column. I'm going to take 10 ones and move them to my tens column. So now I have one one because I took 10 ones and put them in my tens column. Think of a rod that we're moving over. Now I have 13 tens because I took 10 ones, I moved them over to my tens column. So now I have 13 tens and one one. I'm gonna say that again. I had 11 ones but I can't have two digits in one column. So I took 10 ones and I moved them to my tens column. Part four, 14. So now I have 13 tens. But can I have two digits in the tens column? Kennedy, no, I cannot. Kennedy, now I'm gonna move, I'm going to move 10 of my tens to my hundreds column. I'm taking 10 of my tens and moving them to the hundreds column. So now I only have three tens left because I took 10 of them and moved them to the hundreds column. Now my three turns into four.
because I took 10 tens from the hundreds call from the tens to move them to the hundreds. So I had one more hundred. So three plus that one extra hundred equals four. Now, does this look right? Yes. 431. Yes. How does that compare to what I estimated when I rounded in the beginning? How does that compare? Am I close? When I compare this to my estimate, I can see that I'm probably right. We're always asking ourselves, does this make sense? Now let's look at traditional addition. This might be what you're more familiar with, traditional addition. Let's use this problem, 568 plus 345. 568 plus 345. First things first, I'm gonna drop some columns. My greatest place value is my is my hundreds. The greatest place value is my hundreds, so I only need three columns. So I have my ones, tens, and hundreds already labeled. So I'm gonna write my problem. And I'm gonna use my columns. 568, five goes into hundreds, six in the tens, eight in the ones. For 345, I have my three, four, and my five. It's already there. I'm putting it on my chart, and I'm gonna add these together. The first time we use column addition, remember in our last problem, we put both digits under our one. So if eight plus five equals 13, in column, we use our columns, we put 13 right there. Remember that, and then we borrow the tens, well, this time we're gonna do it a little different. This time I'm gonna put my three in my ones column because number 13, my three is in my ones column. And with my one, I'm gonna put it right on top. It's still in my tens column. But this time I don't have to think I'm gonna take 10 ones and put them in the tens column. I'm just gonna put my one right there in the tens column from 13. When I'm adding eight plus five equal 13 using traditional addition, I'm putting my three in the ones column and moving the one to the tens column. And when we get to our tens column, we're going to add six plus four, which is, yes, six plus four equal 10. But remember, I have to add my little one. So six plus four equals 10 plus one equals 11. Just like with my ones column last time, I am going, I'm going to put my one right there, my first one, my second one, that's in the ones column. And then from the 11, I'm gonna move it, that other one to the hundreds column. So my answer is 11. So now, just to recap, eight plus five equals 13. I put the three in the ones column, and I carried my one to the tens. Six plus four equals 10. I didn't wanna forget my one that I brought from my ones column. So I have 11, six plus four equals 10, plus one equals 11. What did I do with my, my 11 that's in my tens column? I moved it to my hundreds column because there cannot be two digits in the same column. Am I finished yet? Nope, not quite. Now that I'm at my hundreds column, I can add one plus five plus three equals nine. So I can see that my answer is 913. That is how U.S. traditional addition works. I'm bringing everything down, just carrying my ones to the next place value. For my ones column, the answer was 13. I carried the one to my tens column. For my answer was 11. I carried that first one to my hundreds column because I cannot have two digits in one place value. So I'm just moving it to the next column. Let's try one more. For this problem, we have 3,685 plus 4,729. The first thing I'm going to do is estimate to find out about what my answer should be. So I'm gonna round my numbers. So 3,685, I'm gonna round that to the nearest thousands place you could also think what number is close to 3,685. Or you could ask yourself what number is close to 4,729. 
I'm just going to round it up. 3,685 is about 4,000. And I'm looking at my neighbor, 4,729. It's about 5,000. That will give me 9,000. So rounding to my thousands place value, 4,000 plus 5,000 equals 9,000. Now it's time to solve my problem. This time I have four digits, four digits in my each number. So instead of three columns, I need four. I'm making room for my thousands. I'm gonna take my numbers and put them on my place value chart, line them up in my columns, using my columns again. But this time I have four columns. So my first number is 3,685. My second number is 4,729. I use my columns to write down each number. Now I have three plus four plus one. Three plus four plus one, yes, equals eight. So my answer is 8,414. Of course, I do not want to forget my comma. Is that close to our estimate of 9,000? Absolutely. All right, guys, how are you feeling? Pretty good? A little more practice? Let's go through two more together. 56 plus 49 equals, the first thing I'm going to do is estimate. So using our estimation, we know 56, yes, is close to 60, and 49 is very close to 50. So our answer should be about 110. Let's see how close we are. So, if you don't have to draw your columns, if you're comfortable now, maybe it helps to write in different colors, completely fine. We're still going to use traditional addition. So I'm going to line up 56 plus 49. Add in my ones first. 6 plus 9 equals? Yes, 15. I'm going to put my 5 in my ones column and then carry my 1 to the tens column. Now I'm going to add my tens together. 1 plus 5 plus 4 equals 10. Yes. So my answer is 105. Is that close to our estimate? You better believe it. 105 is close to 110. So that answer makes sense. Let's do one more together. 774 plus 68. It's going to be our problem that we're looking at. 774 plus 68. So I'm going to round this to 800 just to see what my answer should be about. Take 68 to 70. 800 plus 70 equals 870. So my answer should be pretty close to 870. Remember, this is just for a reminder. It's not our final answer. We don't want to forget the strategies that we've used before. I'm going to line my numbers up just like I did previously. Now, this problem, 774 plus 68. Notice, 68 does not have a digit in the hundreds column. That's okay. I just leave it blank. I don't have to write zero or anything else. I'm lining up starting with my ones then my tens. I don't have a hundred for the number 68. That's okay. As I add these together using traditional addition, remember that's what we're using here. That's our goal. Eight plus four equals 12. So I'm putting my two under my ones and carrying that one under my tens column, above my tens column. Now I'm going to add one plus seven plus six. 1 plus 7 plus 6 equals 14, putting down my 4 and carrying my 1. And now 1 plus 7, I'm adding my hundreds column. My answer is 842. Is that close to my estimate? 
Yes, it is. I'm absolutely close. I know my answer makes sense. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions after watching this video, if something is confusing, or if you just have more questions on rounding and how are we using these different strategies, please let me know.